even myself as a, as a young person, my mom tried to keep me sheltered from a lot of things. Didn't always work, but for the most part, she tried. So um, when you do that, the the worldview closes for young people. So you got to get outside of your you know four corners of your neighborhood, outside of your your corner store, and um, you know I was fortunate enough to go up to school, up the street to school, and then back home, but. The world is so much bigger than that. Buffalo is so much bigger than that. Um, but when you start to get young people outside of Buffalo and they go to different cities and they see how people of color interact with one another, um, it changes mindset and you have to do that. We are back with another episode of the Future Starts Here podcast, but it looks a little bit different today. Today we are at the Pod Hub for Cruise Control Media. So thanks, Jamel, for the space. We love it here. And today we are here with Daniel Robertson. Robertson. Sorry. You gonna butcher my name <laughs> like that, Maddie? That's crazy. Sorry. Daniel <laughs> Robertson. We're here with Daniel Robertson today. Daniel has been with Say Yes for a long time. I'm not gonna put his age out there, so I'm just gonna say for a long time. He started off as an FSS with Say Yes, and then he was a part of summer camps, and then he was involved in mentoring, and then that got him into the Boys and Men in Color Initiative, and now he is the newly appointed director, which is well-deserved. So we're going to let him talk about that transitioning process. So tell us about it, Daniel. The transition, or you you can rewind and go on to the, the start? From the beginning, from the start. All right, so you kind of already mentioned the uh, – I started back and say yes, October 2013. So almost 10 years now that I've been in the fold, I say yes. Uh, as you mentioned, started as a, as a FSS, uh, did some work within the summer camp team uh, for a couple of years. And I think it was 2008, no, 2015, we had the opportunity to actually launch the Say Yes Scholar Mentoring Program, uh, which is a program I had a chance to design, build, cultivate, and grow over time. Uh, 2018, uh, came about, well, actually, let me backtrack. 2017 came about, and there was conversations about uh, Say Yes launching a Boys and Men of Color initiative that would, that came down through the Community Foundation and the Greater Buffalo Racial Equity Roundtable. Um, so in 2016, actually, I applied to be an emerging leader with Open Buffalo, and that's when I met Tommy. So Tommy and I actually built our relationship during emerging leaders and then a year later basically he wound up coming to say yes july 2017 and then we started the boys and men of color work i officially transitioned in january 2018 um into bmoc and part of the draw to get Tommy to say yes was at least the conversation i found out on the back end was uh dave and tommy kind of talked about you know, he would come, basically build the car, as Tommy would always say, analogy, he'll build a car, be the driver, and then hand the keys off to somebody else in a sense, which that somebody else was me. So the, the, uh, the kind of succession plan was already in motion from the moment that Tommy and I started working together. And here we are, what, six years later. Six years later um, I think COVID kind of pushed out our uh, succession timeline a little bit, but here we are, and um, I'm in the seat, got the keys to the car, and it's time to just – make it go, and as Tommy would say, take it to a place that he couldn't. So uh, you mentioned mentoring and cultivating, like, that program at Say Yes. Talk about why mentoring is so important. Um, mentoring for me is important, you know, from a personal standpoint, because uh, as, a, as a young male that didn't have his father growing up, um, you're always looking for people to kind of fill those voids in your life, and a lot of times I think, Young people don't realize that that void that they may have when they're missing, you know, it could be mom, it could be dad, but especially when we talk about males of color, when you're missing that father figure, you know, it, there's a hole there. And that, that hole that you're trying to fill is really just is love from, you know, a male, right? And we, we're in a period now where we talk about toxic masculinity, tox, toxic masculinity and just the state of um, our young men, which I won't go too deep into on this podcast because that's just a conversation for another day. But 
the the influence and the impact that positive males have on a young person um, is is something that you really can't measure, um, and, and it's important to help um, to help us reach levels that uh, reach the levels that we know we can uh, that we that we can reach. I would definitely have to agree with you on that. As far as mentoring goes, it's so funny. Like, you consider Tommy your mentor. All day, he's a goat. I consider his daughter my mentor. So just a, a family of, of mentors, and I, I can definitely um, attest to that. Daisha, she helped me out a lot. Um, I'm still young, so I'm not going to say at, you know, in my youth. I'm still in my youth. But um, when I was 13, uh, you know, it, it was a void that I was trying to fill that I didn't realize. And I just want somebody to hear me or somebody to just advocate for me. And that was Daisha. Um, I was a part of the Upper Bound program, and she was one of the people that worked there. She wasn't even a counselor. She just worked at the desk. Um, and it was so funny. Uh, each year, um, Upper Bound, I got kicked out. <laughs> and uh, you get to use, you get to either keep a teacher or keep a student. I don't really know the exact process, but um, each year she chose to keep me. Um, everybody else wanted me out. Um, I just had a lot of stuff to deal with, and she understood it. Even when I didn't know that she understood it, I was so focused on pushing her out. I was just like, why do you keep coming back to me? Like, just leave me alone. Like, why do you keep talking to me? Why do you keep me in this program? But you know why she was doing that. I didn't at the time, but now I do. So it, it, it just starts the process because, you know, now I'm a mentor and now I'm helping the kids that I'm mentoring become mentors and, you know, inspire them. So I think that the program that you guys have is great. And then the young men that you work with, I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of, work with a lot of them and meet a lot of them. And um, it's, it's, been a, it's been amazing just hearing, hearing conversations. Like Xavier, he's Rockstar. going places. this. All day. He's definitely going places. Talk a little bit about that. Talk about the Boys in Color Initiative and the Breaking Barriers program. Like, what does that entail? So, uh, as I mentioned before, it really came about through, it's one of the nine 10-point agendas on the Greater Buffalo Racial Equity Roundtable, right? So, strategically was positioned, dropped into Say Yes Buffalo because Say Yes has been an organization that over years that we, you know, we've done so many amazing things, not to toot our own horn, but we do. Um, but it's because of the people and the leadership and just the, the staff that we have at SAS and the partnerships that we've been able to build over all of these years and maintain and continue to grow. So um, because of that, um, that initiative was dropped in. You had myself, you had Tommy there, and, and it, it just made it easier for us to kind of get the, get the work off the ground and get it rolling. And just we know there's a void when you talk about um, opportunities for young males of color um, there's issues that impact males of color and young ladies of color, and youth voice is a big piece of what we do within Breaking Barriers. So encouraging those young men to speak out um, regarding issues that are impacting our community, to be a beacon, a pillar, a light in our community, um, because there's, as Tommy and I would always talk about, the, the Calvary is not coming to save us, right? Yeah. If we want change in our own neighborhoods, communities, our schools, we have to be the people that do it, because um, no one else is going to do it for us. And there's um, there are forces at play at work that just don't want to always see people of color succeed. And it's up to us to try to get in and remove those barriers yeah. or break them. <laughs> yes, I, breaking them or removing them. Um, so as we talk about removing barriers or just breaking them overall, um, you guys go on a lot of trips. You guys, um, you've taken the boys to Washington, D.C. You guys take them on camping trips. Um, why is it so important to take um not just young men, but you could focus on them, but um, the youth out of their environments to show them other places. It's exposure. Um, a lot of times, the street to school and then back home, but the world is so much bigger than that. Buffalo is so much bigger than that. Um, but when you start to get young people outside of Buffalo and they go to different cities and they see how people of color interact with one another, um, it changes mindset, and you have to do that. Yeah. I know ultimately the goal, I say yes, is to get pe young people through high school, get them to college, um, have them graduate and stay here in Buffalo to help build up the workforce. Yeah. But we also want young people to know that, that there's a world outside of Buffalo because it just it changes your perspective and how you just look at the world. You get a chance to interact with different people. You see different strategies being implemented in different cities. Um, and you see how, you know, some people are going about going about attacking some of the issues that have plagued us for years. Yeah. And you're able to bring that back. Yeah. I, I I didn't see outside of Buffalo until I was probably about 
16, 17, and me realizing that it's a whole nother world out there and that I could achieve that or, you know, go that distance, it was it was a different experience for me. Whereas before I before I went there, I didn't even think that that was even out there. I didn't know. You know, I grew up on rounds off of Bailey. I just knew the LaSalle corner store. Um, I knew the corner <laughs> store or the gas station on Eggert and Kensington. And that was really it for me. And um, I went away to Fredonia. And the first day there, it's not that far, but it's like a huge environment change when you haven't been anywhere. It is. Like, <laughs> I think about all the streets that I lived on in Buffalo. Well, wow. during my time living in Buffalo. So, Bailey, Montana. Tennessee, Hazelwood, and now I live in North Buffalo. And it's like growing up on the east side up until probably the time I was around 13, I really didn't move around in those areas too much because mom was just like, yo, we're not in the safe neighborhoods. Yeah. You know, I couldn't go out on Montana Street and play in the front of my house. It was like, yo, you play in the backyard or you just stay in the house. Exactly. You know what I mean? And now we just can't, we can't even get kids to go outside. But that's a, that's another thing that's for another day there. too. But um, I, I love traveling now. Like, Anytime I get a chance to get on the plane, I'm gone. Yeah. Like, so even the, the trips that we get to take the young men on, we go to the mentoring summit every year. Cities United, which is an organization that does a ton of work around implementing strategies to reduce gun violence in cities with mayors and young people. Uh, we go to their convening every year. This year it's in Atlanta. Um, so we're looking forward to that. We'll probably take about six to eight young men down there to participate. Jamie is a fellow this year for Cities United. So it's going to be a really cool opportunity experience for him. That's amazing. Um, so, yeah. Shout out, Jamie. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you guys have already done so much, but, you know, now you have the reins. It's, you know, it's your turn. So, so what's next? I know you can't tell us everything, but, you know. What, no, what, it's what funny that you say that, right? So, Breaking Barriers has been run, up and running since 2018. And, yes, we've done a lot, but I feel like we're really just – we've really just started to scratch the surface, right? There's, there's so many other things and just – as uh, as Gino would say, there's always another level, right, that we can take it to. So um, for me, it's just it's really about doing that. Um, I think Benny said last year was about branding. This year is about expanding. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're trying to do. We want to expand into uh, the Buffalo Public Schools. And the, the goal initially was to have Breaking Barriers as an elective course in all the Buffalo Public Schools. So that's something that we're still pushing towards. Um, but we want to try to impact as many young men as possible um, and just give them the, the – the, the leadership skills and tools that they need to navigate the world. Because, um, you know, a lot of times we, Tommy and I, we used to always talk about, talk about going from grassroots to grass tops. Mm -hmm. So you have to know how to navigate and operate in your environments that you're used to, that you've grown up in on a daily basis. All right. But you also have to know how to navigate when you get into those corporate spaces, professional work settings, when you're in those boardroom meetings. Um, yeah. those, are, those are two completely vastly different Places yeah. and, and worlds and environments that young people have to learn how to how to how to navigate. Definitely, I'm still navigating through some of um, these workplaces. You know, sometimes I still freeze up. But you're doing a good job, don't that? I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm getting better. Um, so I got one last question. So, what piece of advice would you give to our youth? <sighs> I know it's a broad question, but that's super broad. Um, you got to grind. Like no one no one is going to give you anything. Um you really have to work hard for whatever whatever it is that you want to accomplish. Uh we always talk about finding your passion and your purpose, so finding those two things. And once you figure out what you're passionate about, it's going to walk you right into, you know, whatever your purpose is. And it's important to try to find those things early on mm -hmm. um because it's just going to make your life that much easier, right? Um uh, what I would add on to that is in your lifelong journey too is find not just one mentor, but um, a plethora, an advisory board of mentors that you can go to to discuss different issues. It might be personal stuff, it might be work stuff, it might be relationship stuff, it might be family issues. Um, one person may not be able to give you all the advice and guidance that you need to, to navigate and deal with all of those different things that just we as adults deal with. Yeah. Um, I mean, me, me being a dad, I'm still, you know, time, I go to Tommy with stuff to just help me with being a dad to Layla. Like it's in balancing work life balance. Like it's something that I struggle with it bad, <laughs> real bad yeah. between, you know, working at say yes. And then, you know, my side activities that I do outside of work as far as bartending and stuff. And then, being a being a full-time dad. So 
um, yeah, find your mentor, find your passion, your purpose, and um, figure out how to just balance all the things that you got to balance in life. And while doing all of that, still maintain your your level of self care because that's important too. Because if you don't take care of you, then everything else goes kaput. Yeah. Forget about it. <laughs> self care is important. You mentioned you do a lot of things. Like, how do you, what do you do for self care? It's really the gym and basketball. Um, but the those gym. things. Those things have been been lacking uh, lately. I haven't been able to get to the gym as consistently as I wanted to. And that's funny. I just saw Jamil on somebody's podcast <laughs> talking about how, um, you know, we don't even practice the things that we preach in regards to the self-care piece. But it's so true. You got to, like, you got to take care of you, man, because you don't. You can't bring your best self um, to, to every situation, every room that you may enter. So it's important. So I... I'm going to dedicate myself to getting back in the gym um, at least four times a week and just back to playing ball because those are things that, you know, basketball court is my sanctuary. Like Kobe was my favorite player and just, you know, try to bring that type of mentality to everything that you do. So, Wow. Well, there's something new about you. I didn't know you like playing basketball. Oh, yeah. All day. I didn't go to the gym either, but now I do. <laughs> That's what you're going to do. Really, Maddie? <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to tell me that I didn't ask you about today? No, I think you did a good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you guys can find us on Facebook or Instagram at SayYesBuffalo or online at SayYesBuffalo.org. Um, until next time.